Eastern. Okay, let's just check out my input for my mic for a moment. Use this one. Let me know if you can hear me okay. This is really live, so um, if you hear a dog barking, my dog's just below my desk, or a plane go by, you know it's live. And if you're watching this on the replay, you can follow along in the chat because I'll be checking comments for the rest of the day and always. So it's good to see you all here. Hello, Chris B, Shelly G, Craig, Nico. Look at all you guys here already. Excellent. So um, I didn't send the early notification like I normally do because um, I was really thinking about today's topic, which I think is going to be fascinating. Um, let me know. Oh, Gabrielle is here too. Sounds good. Thanks, Craig. I appreciate you letting me know about the sound. Let me just move my microphone over here a little bit so you guys can hear me okay. So I have a really cool topic today and it's based on people's questions that they've sent me. And whenever you post comments, in the comments area, uh, I pick out certain questions that I think are gonna be really helpful for everyone. Don't mind my voice <clears throat> today is a little bit, my hair looks the bomb. Well, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Okay, so these questions I feel are going to help us all grow and shed some light and insight onto the common questions that we have about spirituality, about the topic of the day, which is proof of life after death, which is quite an audacious statement, but I feel today that I'm going to bring some information forward that will take us closer to that. Hey Cheryl, hello, and behold the hand, behold the nail, hello. <laughs> uh, you have, you guys have some real fun names that uh, you use there. So before um, anything, I want to tell you about a dream I had. So this was quite fascinating and I feel like it relates to the day. So I just had this dream. And for those of you that have been on the show and know me well, you know that uh, I wrote a book about the downloads that I received in my dreams and in my meditations. So last night I had a dream that I was in a different world and it was most fascinating because the technology was like mind-blowing so um just to give you an example it felt like it was earth but i knew it wasn't like it had characteristics of earth but it didn't so anyhow <clears throat> these doors were kind of like hidden and then they would section out open and they were so high tech the way that they moved and it, it felt like it could identify me as i approached the door and then it would open up <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I'll talk about it more. <laughs> I'll talk about it more. Um, Christina says, hello, taking a break from cleaning house. Well, this is a good break. This is a good spiritual break. Anyhow, the dream showed me that there are other dimensions, which kind of is a gentle segue into what we're going to talk about today. And that is proof of the afterlife. And uh, I brought my phone here with some questions that people asked me on the comments. So I'm going to um, start by checking them out and answering them for you. Pardon me that I'm not making eye contact right now, but what I'm going to do is read a question. So I'm just going to put my glasses on and go for it. So Eviatar says, can you explain more? He says tonight, because where he is, it's nighttime. So he's in Israel, so it's night there. Could you explain more about why you are so certain of an afterlife? Yes. I will. And I think that's a really good question. And then um, somebody else said, what do NDEers mean when they talk about their soul group? Is that their family members? That's the other thing we're going to talk about today. And then um, another person said, hi, Sylvia. I love your Saturday show. I know what vibrations mean kind of, but could you explain what you mean by raising your vibration? Which I think uh, vibration frequency, I think what happened to my hand? Oh, I burned myself. I burned myself cooking. I'm on a new mission to, <laughs> to uh, do some cooking and I burned myself. That's what happened. So um, Kenny Runhill, Rumhill says those doors uh, of perception. Interesting. So you're talking about the dream, the doors in the dream. I think I'm going to talk about my dream last and I think I'm going to answer some of these questions first. So... Eviatar said, why am I so confident that there is an afterlife? And I know why he's asking that. 
The reason he's asking that is because he wants me to prove that there is an afterlife. And I know why people want proof of an afterlife because I've been spending, um, yes, exactly, Shelly G. I've been spending my whole life really thinking about the afterlife. And I think I need to give you a little bit of background about um, when this all started. Of course, it started with my dream of my grandpa, but I, I wasn't really even aware at eight. But it was when I was 12. And I think that that's a really cool, pivotal um, time, 12, because that's sort of a time of awakening anyways. And um, I, I had to do a science project for school on Egypt. And I picked death and life after death. And I realized that I was fascinated with trying to understand what is death and what does it mean to us right now being alive. So I just wanted to give you a moment, just a, a bit of a background that this started a long time ago. It started even before I understood all of my dreams. It started a long time ago. So, and I think that my mission in life personally uh, since I've been able to connect with the afterlife is to come here to um, learn for myself and then share that there is life after death. And now I want to explain why I feel so confident about it. So some of you know and some of you don't know that I have a science background. Literally um, went to university for the sciences and so my mind is all about asking questions. And so I've been constantly asking myself these questions about, you know, where did we come from? How did this happen? And when you think along the lines of science, you start where you're at. So you don't speculate about the potential of what could be, but you use the evidence of what is now. And so the evidence of what is now is that we are alive. We're on this planet. And, you know, when you really think about just that simple statement, we're alive and we're on this planet. And this planet is in the middle of a solar system, which is in the middle of a galaxy, which is in the middle of a universe with billions of galaxies. That alone is miraculous and mysterious. However, the question is, well, why are we here and where did we come from? So we're starting to learn in science, because I think some, when we think about proof, we want to look at science. Um, when we think about science and where we're at, we understand that our body is composed of the elements, that the same elements that are out there in the universe, such as carbon, so on and so forth. So, and we're made up of atoms, and we know that there's space in atoms. So to speculate that there's life anywhere else, I think there is, without a doubt. So is it just a universe or are there more dimensions? Like what is, what is um, dark matter, so on and so forth. So you're really opening up a big can of worms, but let's get right back to earth for a moment. So if I'm standing somewhere and someone's looking at me from behind, I can get the sense that um, they are watching me. Even if I don't hear them, like even if they're not saying anything, I get that sense. So to be alive here and to be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to be aware of, what did I say? Scientists say the sun is 92.9 .9 million miles away from the earth. I don't think so. Okay. Anyhow, um, what I'm trying to say is that there's plenty of evidence here right on earth to understand that A, we have senses that go beyond what if we were just plain and physical. And if you're in tune and if you're in the vibrational frequency of that, you pick up on that. Then the question is, what are you talking about vibration? If you understand a little bit about atoms, atoms vibrate at a certain rate. So your consciousness also vibrates at a certain rate. And it's I suppose you could say, and I'm making a speculation here, that the level of intelligence and um, awakening that you have is to the degree of your understanding of what's happening. And I think a lot of people put their faith, ah, oh, thank you for the super chat, David N. Thank you. I think a lot of people put their faith in, um, and by the way, I'm gonna 
read out any super chats that come in and you have a question that you add to it, I'll read it out. People put faith and stock in outside forces. Like God is outside of me. This is away from me. Like they always want to do that rather than looking within themselves. And so when you look within yourselves, that's why I feel so certain. Because when I look around me at this earth, I understand that I'm more than just a physical being. I think it becomes evident when you look at our creativity and the amazing abilities that we have as human beings. Then you have another camp. There's two camps of people. People who are looking at the creativity and the excellentness of um, just being alive and being human. And then there's another camp that says... Oh, hey, you know, we're always fighting. There's bad things on earth. It's going downhill and on and on. Even if you were of the camp to say that everything's going bad, the, the real matter of the fact is, is if you can broaden your mindset, you could understand that even if we never did anything bad to the earth or to each other, the earth will pass away because that's the nature of this reality. So either another planet will hit it, it'll shoot out of orbit, um, the sun will extinguish, like everything is renewing itself and everything is going through a reincarnation, so to speak, for a lack of better words. Every planet, every being, every everything is constantly renewing itself. So when you look at what's happening with your own eyes right here on earth, it is enough evidence to understand that something beyond the regular is happening right now. Something beyond our perception, or at least people whose vibration rate is a little bit slower. Now, that's not to say that it's bad. That's not to say that you are not evolved or whatever. It just means that we have different levels of awakening, different levels of ascension based on the beliefs that we hold, based on the information that we want to process, based on what we choose. Now, the thing that I feel, and I'm going to answer questions soon. In, in two minutes, I'll start answering some questions. The thing that I concern myself about is that because we are in this together, um, we are also influenced by what other people say and do and believe and think and the vibration that they're at. So we're all in it together. If we are all thinking on a fearful level of a lower vibration and like fear, death, problems, all this stuff, which reminds me, somebody said, if, if we're here just to learn and all bad things and bad feelings, then why are we here? I don't believe that. I do believe we're here to create, to, uh, to grow, and to experience, but I don't believe that we're here because we're being punished or that it should be uh, bad. I do believe unconditional love is part of the experience, and I talk about that most of the time. Today I'd like to talk about why I believe that um, there is life after death. And the long of, and the short of it is, is that we are living right now. We are living proof that we are alive. And who's to say that just because we can't see with our eyes, the people who have moved on to different dimensions, that they're dead. And we have proof through the end years that they're not dead, that they have gone to that threshold and come back and told plenty of stories. There's literally thousands and thousands of near-death experiencers that have said this. Let me illustrate. If some, and I've said this before, but if somebody is living in Europe right now and I didn't have a cell phone, I didn't have internet, I didn't have any means, a boat, a plane, a train to get there, I would not believe that they existed because I have no means to um, receive information that they are there. So we don't have any means of receiving information of other dimensions. So we have to have faith and understanding. And that's where Jesus comes in. And if you do read, for example, um, the book of Thomas uh, and some of the other more obscure ones that weren't included in the Bible, they clearly allude to life after death and what happens after that. So as I'm sitting here in this life, all of the synchronicities that occur, the fact that I am currently alive, the fact that science tells me that 
Um, 99.8% of my body is uh, composed of atoms which are composed of empty space. The fact that um, we do feel and sense things even though we really shouldn't, we really take that for granted. Like that, the senses that we do have, like, oh, you know, I was just thinking of you and then the phone rang. We always think that those are small coincidences, but in fact, those are little inklings of our abilities that are here and for us to experience right now. And because I've experienced so many of them, um, just by default, I feel I do believe. Okay, let's read. Let's read some comments. We're going to have a fun time with this, okay? So um, Jim says... I've had a tree miraculously grow out of an apple tree stump and it wound up being a sycamore or something else entirely different. No doing of my own. Well, that's, that's cool. So first of all, that's coincidental because one of my favorite trees are the sycamore tree. And I also had an apple tree that I thought I was going to cut down. <laughs> it was an old, old, old one, and this was a long time ago. I love trees, and I never would cut them down. But this particular tree was in the wrong spot at the wrong time, and it was a really old tree anyhow. So that reminds me of that situation, a similar situation. Um, and then Prishant says, new member, welcome. Okay, so there is an actual membership to this channel, by the way, where we do Zoom meetings and we get together. Um, these live chats are also, this is not part of the membership, but if you wanted to do more, you can, and it's under e each uh, video. Craig says, the radio station analogy can help here. Sure. So um, right now, if you think about every radio station that's happening in the world and in your area, and you tune into one station, you can hear that station. But that doesn't mean that all the other stations aren't playing. All the other stations are playing, but you can't hear it. And it's just like the other side. Just because you can't see your loved ones doesn't mean that they're dead, they're gone forever, you're never going to see them. Which um, kind of leads to that other question when somebody said, what do you mean by group, group souls? Okay, so, um, you know, you have friends here on earth, right? You have mother, you have father, you might have cousins, brothers, sisters, relatives, um, neighbors. You know these people. And these people are in your life, you think, randomly or by birth. But in fact, um, they're here because they travel along with you to share in the experiences and co-creation of life and perhaps even people who you have negative interactions with family members or people um, they're there to help you learn and have an opportunity to grow so again we're all in this together i'm getting a lot of connections today so this one dream i had where um, i was driving a car and there was this child in front of the car that I, I got out of my car and I said, okay, move, you know, move away. And then a lady came to me and uh, from the right and said, look, until you realize that the child, you and me are one, you're not getting anywhere. So until we realize that you, me, our family members and our neighbors are all in this together, we're not really going to move forward too far. When we start to think, oh, you know, I don't like this person and, I, you know, those people are bad or this or that, what's happening is that we're actually putting ourselves at a disadvantage because we need everybody to collaborate and to collude in the learning experience that we have here on earth and you can't really get around it we need each other and actually when you really dive into it and have that unconditional love that's what unconditional love is it's not just like oh i love you i love you and those emotional feelings unconditional love is to say even though we're having a bad experience to here together on earth I still love you and I get it. I get that you have a purpose in my life. I get that I don't understand all of the mysteries of life and, uh, and our karma that we had in the past, but I love you anyways. I love you even if you're different, even if you are saying things that I don't believe in. I love you and I'm gonna try to understand unconditionally, not if you think like me, I love you. If you act like me, I love you. If you have the same religion as me, I love you. If you behave in a way that is appealing to me, I love you. That's not unconditional love. Unconditional love is understanding that there's 
stuff that's happening beyond our personal comprehension that we need to tap into and learn. This is information that we are unable to process if we have a leaning towards being closed-minded. This is why we need to unconditionally understand and love those people. And we can never forget that we're in this together. Our souls are literally connected how and why. Because our souls all together comprise of the body of God. And so um, to say, I don't love you or I don't like you, what you're saying is, I don't like that aspect of God. And then the next question is, that is terrible, Sylvia. How could you say that those people who did bad things are part of God? God is much bigger than we can comprehend or understand. And I know that this is a very uh, big topic here, but... It's important for us to unconditionally love, not to have that emotional sensation of, oh, we love, even though I'm a very emotional person, but to understand that there's more to it that we get. If there's a part or an aspect of our society that needs to heal, oftentimes one soul will take on the burden of being that bad person. You know, have you ever seen a situation or observed a situation where, you know, everybody has colluded to create this environment, but one person snaps. That person who snaps is the weakest link, so to speak. It's the individual, it's the canary in the coal mine. It's the person saying, hey, guess what? This isn't working out. And they're the one that's the indicator. And yet we want to throw everything onto them. We want to say, you're bad. You did it. Those are the people that were wrong. Not you. You didn't take it apart. But the fact is, vibrations don't lie. If you're in it, it means that you're vibrating at a level that is opening up that awareness. So if you're seeing a lot of great things, kudos to you because your vibration is high and your frequency is high and you are um, connecting with goodness and when you see a lot of good in your life, it's because you are being the frequency of goodness. When you see a lot of bad and controversy in your life, it means that you are not allowing yourself to vibrate at the frequency where goodness exists. And if you find yourself on earth and you think it's um, not satisfactory, then we have to look back upon ourselves and say, I'm part of this frequency and vibration. It's not a point of shame or punishment. It's a point of awareness and understanding of who you are and where you are. And if you think that you're going to die and go to this fantastically beautiful place, I'm here to tell you, you're going to go exactly where your vibration takes you because you'll be comfortable there. So do I believe that there's a heaven or a hell? Hmm. Um, not, not in the way that not in the traditional sense. I do believe that it does exist, but not in the traditional um, sense. I'm going to just read some comments here. Miguel says, Hola, Silvia. Hola, buenos dias. Um, and then I just want to read some more comments here. And curiosity and desire to know more helps. Okay, so I'm going to um, keep moving on in this. If you do have a question, post it down below. Somebody said, wow, just one second. Wow, Jim. The horticulturalist could be really interested in that. <laughs> okay, you guys, I love it when you guys are all chatting with yourselves. I want to try to stick to the thing. By the way, uh, I've been asked to speak at the summit. I was going to be part of the organizing of the next near-death experience summit, but I've decided to focus on my channel, focus on getting my website up, but I am speaking at it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you there at the summit, the near this uh 2021 near-death experience summit a lot of people ask me have you experienced a near-death experience um you know technically no because i've never been in a car accident or an accident where i actually died and came back but on a regular basis i'm able to go and see what's happening on the other side and experience what's happening through my dreams and a lot of people say well are they just dreams no they're not just dreams i'm actually there and oftentimes when i am there i'm like i can't believe i'm here i'm like this is the most fascinating stuff like last night when i saw the technology of that dimension i was like 
mind-blowing. I can't believe that this door functioned the way it was. It wasn't just a door, but it was a door that was communicating with the information in me. And I was able to make the door open or not. And then as I passed through the door, things looked like earth, but I knew I wasn't in earth. Okay, so let's go to see some of the comments here. Um, by the way, thanks again, David N., for the super chat. Uh, our consciousness is not limited to our body, right? So we have a brain and oftentimes, oops, that part. Oftentimes we think that our brain is where we are thinking, but our brain is like in a computer, for example, it's the processor, the CPU. And uh, we have software, which is our belief system. And we have eyes, which is our receptors like recording and audio right here. I have talked about this once before in an interview. I think it really trips people out. But when you think about how our body functions, it's very similar to like a computer. Anyways, um, our, our mind goes beyond our brain and our mind is able to go to different places in, at nighttime and even during the day. Um, if you've ever studied about yogis or got curious about yogis, yogis are able to transcend their bodily functions and like bleeding, for example, like they can put a pin in themselves and not bleed. And they're able to go through meditation and yoga to different dimensions and communicate at that level. So what we can do here on earth is proof enough that there is life beyond our understanding and i guess um, it comes down to what you define death as being so if going to a different dimension that we have no ability to tap into due to our frequency or lack of awareness does that mean that we've died or does that mean that we've moved to a different dimension um, i believe that we've moved to a different dimension and why do i believe that well Personally, I've had those experience, experiences, but also really love to um, read a lot of the stuff about Jesus through like the Gospel of Thomas, and he talks about eternal life. Now, from a religious standpoint or traditionalist standpoint, we'll say, you can think, well, if I pray enough, if I'm good enough, if I'm uh, God will grant me uh, the ability to go to this next dimension and have a good life. But I'm here to tell you that 100% of all of us are going to a different dimension, period, uh, because every single one of us is going to die to this life. The question is, will your awareness be alive? Will you step into the next dimension with doubt and fear and what will you encounter or joy and positivity and happiness? And guess what? It doesn't start there. It starts here. That's why that prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, King, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. So why did he say that? Were those just random words? No, because it starts right here on earth. And if you think about our frequency and where we're at right now, we're on this planet, and there's a lot of positive things about being on this planet, and there's a lot of positive action, a lot of invention, a lot of creation, a lot of souls helping other souls, a lot of people um, awakening to their spiritual selves and investigating and asking questions. But there's a lot of stuff that's negative too. Can we say, well, that's not me. Well, that's not a part of me. We can't, we can't say that. But we can, however, transcend to other dimensions where our frequency is met and happier happier places where we will be more joyful with our consciousness and our frequency. So once you see that, you see it's, it's easy to believe that there is life after death. It's hard for me to imagine that with all of this consciousness and this um, awareness that I'm going to just disappear. I mean, it really that, that's more difficult to me to believe than to believe that our life is eternal. Now, I have to admit, after having that dream about Jesus where he showed me about um, that this is just one experience and that we're all alpha and omega, no beginning and no end, and that we go from one experience to another. So if you can consider a lifetime an experience and you go from one to another, then you understand that you can make that choice. You can 
combine with all consciousness, like a lot of NDEers say, that they go to a place of all understanding and love, and they, they're all there. Um, the reason why they feel so much love is because when we leave this, this frequency and vibration and we realize that we're all connected, we're all like, ah, this feels great, you know? Um, this is great because we're all connected. I'm feeling loving and I'm feeling like I'm, I don't have the limitations of thought process. My understanding is much greater because it's combined with everyone else's um, when they've gone to that dimension. Okay, so David Ward says, I agree, Dorothy, there is only one way, faith in Jesus Christ. Right. So now let's go there. Mm -hmm. It is a bit of a controversial thing. So I want you to be open-minded and kind. I am a big advocate of Jesus Christ, but I feel that he actually came here to awaken us to eternal life. What does it mean to wake up to eternal life? Like, what does faith mean? Does That's the question. So I can only explain from my standpoint, and you can reply. Faith to me means believing what he said. There is an afterlife. I am going there. My life is eternal. And I'm not saying anything different. You know, what I'm telling you is exactly what he said to me. But in part, the reason why I believe that is, one, he said that, but also because it becomes more and more apparent when your frequency increases, just from a very fundamental standpoint. Um, it's not one group or one allegiance that is going to go to this next dimension. We're all dying to, the, to this dimension. We're all moving forward. And thank goodness for that, because how would it be like if we all stayed in the same dimension? The problem comes when we have lack of understanding and we're all fearful. We're fearful and mournful that someone left us. We're fearful that we are leaving. We're fearful of a lot of things. And I think fear has always been synonymous with ignorance. And ignorance is not a bad word. Ignorance just simply means not being able to process all the information available to us right now. And so we uh, make choices and decisions and have thought processes that are not um, always beneficial for our own good when we lack the level of awareness that we could potentially have. So in that case, now, if I do not believe that certain people are and aren't going to um, be saved, so to speak. Um, however, I would like to, uh, I got a super sticker from Jennifer Pollard. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Appreciate it. So I don't believe that some, some people aren't going to reach uh, awareness, heaven, so to speak, and some people are. But it's just going to take some of us longer. And when we're in, in a state of ignorance or not being able to process reality and the nature of reality for what it is, it does feel like hell. I mean, think about it. So many people here right now, do you know how many people tell me that they're not happy about being here um, and that they're not, you know, they're af afraid of all the things that are happening in the world. Just this morning, I read it all the time and I want you to know that gratitude is the solution to that and open-mindedness, unconditional love and understanding, unconditional love in each other too. Um, having gratitude for what we do know and for what is and not fighting everybody all the time. Look, if you don't agree with me, that's cool. At some point, we're all going to meet up. We all have the same fate. We're all leaving this body and going someplace. So if we can't, if we can't agree on where we're going, that's fine. However, um, I think that uh, it would be smart of us as a species to collaborate together on getting along and having a greater understanding rather than arguing and debating. Okay, so let's read some things here. Um, Pip Gatz says, fear and control is the propaganda of the children. Okay. I'm not, Pip, I'm not going to say I disagree with you, but I, I don't think we should just blame the church because the church has a role in helping people at different stages. You see, at the different stages of awakening, you need certain things. And there's a point, like I learned, I learned about the Shroud of Turin at a church. So I don't want to slag any level of awareness. Um, although I can appreciate what you said, Pip, and I love you unconditionally. 
there everybody is at a certain stage it's like do you remember like obviously you don't remember directly but we didn't we didn't use fire we didn't invent a wheel at that time during those times we couldn't have conceived of how our lives would change with those most basic technologies at that time it's just a matter of one of us or two of us having that creativity and um, that co-creation and trying to make things better and then they share it with everyone and we all grow en masse. We're, right now we're at a stage where there are certain people that are getting it and saying, ah, yes, there is life after death. Um, the NDEers are coming to tell us that. People who have dreams like I do coming to tell us that. People in meditation, yogis, going through transcendental meditation kind of things, even though I'm, I don't really know what that is. Don't is. I've heard of it, but I just do my own meditation. They are shifting our awareness. Things are moving. Back in the day, if we talked about this, we could have been you know, burnt at the stake, but thank goodness that we have a more, um, we should be grateful for the fact that we're allowed to be curious and to move on with our consciousness. So I'm opening it up to um, more questions. Belinda Barbo says, hello, Sylvia from Tunisia in North Africa. Oh my gosh, I know exactly where that is. Thank you for showing up and being here today. And I know it's evening there where you are too. Jennifer Pollard says, tell us everything you know about Jesus, please. Okay, so hang on to your shorts. <laughs> so I believe that Jesus, if you really read in the words of what he said, he was given us good news. He even says, here's the good news. And the good news is you don't die. The good news is that you're moving from one experience to another. The good news is that there are more dimensions than you are aware of. You are probably aware of some dimensions. You're aware of many more dimensions than people just, uh, what, a thousand, two thousand? What, how long ago was it then that we all collectively believed that the world was flat? Okay, you tell me, uh, you guys. So even from that standpoint, we now understand that the earth is round and we all understand that we are not the center of the universe anymore, that we are rotating um, around um, um, a sun that's also rotating around, um, you know, the, in the center of our galaxy, uh, a black hole in the center of our galaxy. I mean, there are so many hints at what he was saying, but when you read, it's like, if I may, without being condescending, if you have a five-year-old reading uh, a paragraph on something scientific, for example, they're just not going to get it. At 10, they'll understand a little bit more to the level of their awareness. At 20, <clears throat> they may have some more insight into what they're reading, the same paragraph. At 30, they have a greater understanding. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. At 90, they're like, oh my gosh, it was there all the time, and I just didn't realize it. So the fact that there are other dimensions that we can connect with souls, um, some of us can connect with souls, uh, that, that should tell you that there is that awareness. Now, what if you can't connect with the soul? Should you not believe? What if you don't have dreams? Should you not believe? No, it's just going to take you to have that genuine desire I'm going to tell you straight up, if you judge and think everyone else is wrong and you're right, or if you believe that your way is the only way, and if you only love yourself and the closest to you and you don't love anyone else in unconditional love, it's going to be problematic. It's going to take you longer. That's why Jesus said, love one another like you love yourself, because together we can actually accelerate our understanding and our wisdom. He tried to tell people the truth and look what happened to him. I mean, uh, people get really feisty and upset when you tell them the nature of reality because they don't want to know it. They don't want to. They don't want to hear it because it runs perpendicular to what they believe, and um, it really ruffles feathers. That's why people tread lightly uh, when we're talking about those things. Okay, um, Jim says the Akiana painting is a good one for sure about Jesus. Right. Okay. So. Let me be a little controversial here. Why are we so hung up on what Jesus looks like? I mean, 
I think it's wonderful to contemplate and speculate, but it's his message that he came for. It's just like me. What does it matter what I look like? It's what I'm saying to you. And also, when you move to a different dimension, like when I saw my father, my father in went in the real earthly life, he died of cancer and he looked very old. But when I saw him in my dream and he was communicating with me, he looked 35. And you know, whatever your per perception is, is what they will show up as because they want you to feel comfortable with that frequency and that vibration. Also, your eyes see things for what you want them to see. I tried to um, illustrate that last time when I asked people what um, ancestry I came from. And some people said Danish and some people said, you know, Greek or whichever. But the fact is that, is that you can't, you can only speak speculate based on your perception of what you think and believe versus what reality is. So I think the message is the most important thing, not necessarily uh, what his ancestral background is or what he looked like. I think what he said, I think we're only scratching the surface of understanding what he said and why he said it. Not so much what he said. Why did he tell us to love one another? Why do you think that? I want to hear the answer. I'd love for you to write it down. In the meantime, if you're here, you've never been here before, and you're one of the 103 people watching right now, jump in the chat. I want to hear your questions. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know whether you agree or disagree, any questions that you might have about the afterlife. Okay, and so Prashad says, the galaxy is like a super large cellular organism and the solar systems are a lot like atoms with a star and a nucleus and planets and like electrons. You're talking my language there, Prashant. Uh, the patterns of creation repeat itself in different sizes. Yes, 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 exactly. That's why I know that there's life after death. And let me explain, because everything is patterned after itself. Now, if a galaxy gets swallowed up by a black hole, come, is consumed it, and, and then shot out and renewed like a supernova, we are the same. We are constantly renewing. We are not different than the galaxy. And when you said that, you just hit, you just hit the right button there because we are recycling and we are renewing and we are rebirthing like the universe is rebirthing. So we are rebirthing, our cells are rebirthing, the galaxy is, the um, all of the universe is and that's why we are eternal. But when we get sad when someone dies and they are uh, rebirthing, it's um, and I say this with, if, if you have somebody who you just lost, I don't want to be insensitive because I understand about mourning, but it would be sad if we just stayed and never evolved or changed or grew. Not only would it be sad, but it would be going against the nature of the universe of it continually renewing itself. I did also have a dream about that, which uh, maybe, maybe it's for another chat. Okay, David said, "Yes, there is no fear when you uh, there is no fear when you accept that death has been destroyed through faith and accepting the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ." Okay, now David, um, when you say that, can we take that statement that you just said, where there is no fear when you accept that death has been destroyed through faith? and accepting the gift of eternal life. Do you get what you're saying there? When you realize the nature of the universe and reality, you understand that yes, we are going to go through a tunnel, which is when you really think about it, like a black hole, we are going to be recycled, but our soul never gets um, eliminated and that we continue on and move through, why would I want to be Sylvia a million more times? Why wouldn't I want to grow and try more experiences and those kinds of things? Now, when you pinpoint it to Jesus Christ, I do agree with you that you're right, but from a slightly different standpoint, he came here to tell us, hey guys, wake up. This is what's happening. You're sleeping and you're acting like this. You're, be you're being 
you're behaving poorly to one another and to the earth and to the animals and stuff. You need to change because guess what? You're all in this together. We're all going um, to the next level. And he tried to explain it the best that he could during that time. But what happened is um, some groups interpreted it in the way that they wanted to and limited it to only those people who believe in that. But regardless, God is so powerful that regardless of how limited our thinking is, um, we're getting there anyhow. We are going to get there. And also, I think that um, what we need to understand is that there's phases and stages of awakening for people to understand those things and to be gentle and understanding. That's where that unconditional love comes. I'm just grabbing my tea. Um, Charm Holt says, hi, could you please share what Jesus looks like? Okay, I'm, I'm on, <laughs> I've done it so many times. You should watch my video um, where I saw Jesus. And again, my interpretation of Jesus is going to be based on what I saw at the Shroud of Turin, what I uh, believe in my mind, uh, how it is, and also w what I want to see, okay? Um, you will see what you want to see. The message is what's important. The information is what is important. You know, people, uh, did anybody ever watch that show Braveheart uh, where he said, that point where he said, yeah, someone said, well, you look so short. You don't look that great. You don't look that powerful. But the way that people talk about you, you're like a giant and a hero and everything like that. The thing is, is we are going to put whatever visual that we want to onto people and that that wasn't the that's like looking at the skin versus what the message was okay um thank you for that question i appreciate it um uh, charm um prasad in my father's house there are many mansions yes prashant yes many mansions dimensions and when you when you combine that i just did an interview yesterday with um somebody who i'm going to be posting this week on wednesday probably and she also talked about that when you when you combine some of the elements of quantum physics and physics where real concrete stuff about atoms and and how everything works and how uh waves and uh, what are those waves and particles and the experiments that they've been doing you know that sometimes you can see a wave and sometimes you can see a particle so what if after death you just can't see us because we are in a different form does that mean we're dead well it appears like we're dead but what is death i want you guys to tell me and belinda said many blessings love and light to everyone watching you are highly favored thank you amy gives a heart and prayer hands. Christina says, if you find um, a Kiana's painting, that is Jesus, I met him once in the flesh and did not realize. Beautiful, good for you. And I don't question. I mean, I think everybody has their own personal relationship with Jesus. Gabriella says, I agree, Brian. Why all these learning and experiences if we're just going to disappear? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so... Uh, guess what, guys? I've got some really great news for you. We're here to actually have joy. And if we're not experiencing joy, it's because we're not, we're not <laughs> doing a good job at vibrating at joy. How do you live a joyful, peaceful, excellent, fulfilling life? You be it. How do you change the world? You become the example. How do you, and that's what Jesus was telling us, that's what Gandhi was telling us, that's what the wise seers were telling us. If you want joy, happiness, uh, prosperity, abundance, you have to be it. You have to be it to make it happen. The problem is, is that we say, I'll believe it when I see it. I will be rich when I have the money. I will be abundant when I feel everything's going my way. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to be it first and then you will see it instead of I'll see it. And that's what they were talking about, Thomas, doubting Thomas. That's what they were talking about. They were teaching you those principles. And what did we do? We just decided to really clamp down on the limited vision and say, oh, he was just talking about Jesus. And he doubted, doubting Thomas doubted that Jesus died and came back. That's the story. That's the story is that when you become joy, you experience joy. You can't doubt it and then experience it. Just like he couldn't doubt that Jesus was, you know, um, going to live forever 
if you know do you get what I'm saying here? You have to actually believe and have a hundred percent faith in the fact that you can transmute your own energy to create joy and abundance and love and prosperity and make it happen. And when you doubt it, then that's when there's pain, misery, poverty, ignorance. And then we all start looking to someone else that God is in the sky going to come and help us. Well, when Jesus said the kingdom of God is within, that implies God is within you and that you have the power to connect. And when he said all these things, he meant it. So I'm getting passionate about this. Okay, um, you're not here to have a bad experience is what I'm trying to tell you. You're here to have a great experience and you will have an experience according to your vibration and your vibration is according to your faith. And that's exactly what Jesus said. You will be healed and whole according to your faith. He didn't put his hand on your head and say, you are healed because I said so, although he could have. But he said, you are healed by your faith. Your faith has made you whole. So if you believe and have faith that this world can be a good world and that um, your life can be whole, yeah, then that's what happens. Hey, Holly K, look at you, super chat. Thank you so much. Okay, what a discussion today. I told my husband that today's chat is the evolving discussion we had throughout our time together. Yes. Exactly. And Prashad said, yes, and Jesus also told the people he healed according to your faith. Exactly. So there is a message, and for some of us, we perceive it as a subliminal message that we are waking up to, that he was trying to tell us the nature of reality, that your faith, and that requires you understanding, and this is a biggie. Hang on. This is a big one. <clears throat> Everything that you see outside of yourself, everything is a reflection of everything you see is possible within yourself. Yes. So if you see everything as bad, then within you, that's what you think, the degree to which you think is possible. That's a hard one to swallow. But if you see good outside of yourself, it means that is the degree to which your faith and your unconditional love is evolving. So you can gauge and measure your own evolution or being through what you're seeing in one another. That's why it's so important, you guys, to see and love outside of yourself. Because if you, if you are in conflict with the world and everybody in it and everyone's belief systems, that means that it's just a reflection of what's happening within you. And because the kingdom is within you and the power um, and the glory and everything is within you, you want to project that and that's what you'll see. But if you're looking to the outside and being suspicious of everything that you see um, and not having that unconditional love, understanding and wisdom, you will not be seeing what you want to see. And you'll constantly be questioning, why me? Why don't I see it? Why, do I, why am I not getting it? And you will have that eternal question until your faith makes you whole until you're understanding, until you believe. That's why faith is so critical. Okay, let's see this. Cheryl, this hour has gone by too quickly. I know, we're almost done. Five minutes and we're up. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Thank you, Cheryl. You're so quiet. I didn't hear you ask any questions, Cheryl. It's good to see you here. And thank you for the link that you sent me. It's been a very busy week. I have been really practicing things. Thank you for the super chat, Craig. I have been, uh, thanks for another dynamic talk today, Sylvia. You're welcome. I've been focusing on trying to allow myself to really experience the joy and the love that is available to me here on earth. And I've really been trying to practice it. I've been getting hobbies that make me happy. I've been overcoming. Oh, I just want to cry. I've really been overcoming a lot of my own personal obstacles. So when I'm talking to you guys, I'm not telling you, hey, I, I'm all fine and well. I am also learning to project the most wonderful reality and heaven wherever I am 
hey, don't forget this. You take yourself where you go. So that's why it's so critical for us to uh, elevate our vibration within ourselves and together. And when you look at someone else and know that that's a reflection of you and you absolutely need to love it. And if you, if you, if you have an aversion to it, you need to learn how to unconditionally love. Let's read some more comments and we we'll go, Holly K, black holes exist at the center of every galaxy and while they behave outside the laws of traditional physics, they obey God's laws. You got it, Holly K. Um, do these black holes take us to heaven and different dimensions? You got it. So what they do is they're a part of the recreation and co-creation of God in the most powerful way. And I have more than a sneaking suspicion that when people are talking about that tunnel that they're talking about, that they're going through, we are going through a vortex of renewing and there's no going back. Everything that goes in, like all the galaxy, the stars and, and planets that go down through the black hole, they come out as new material to recreate in recreation. So we're never going to see those planets exactly as they were and that's why we are not going to see our loved ones in the same exact way. That's why I can't pinpoint what uh, Jesus specifically looked like or what someone's gonna specifically look like. We are going to renew all the time. That's a guarantee. And it's also a guarantee that we will continue to live on forever. Not just because I said or Jesus said, but also when you look at science, you cannot destroy energy. Energy will continually be moving and depending on what we believe and our faith will dictate where we go and what we will experience. Boom. Mic drop. It's over. I love you guys all. Holly, thank you. And thank you for everybody who did a super chat. I really appreciate it. Keeps the channel going and it's really uh, contributed in the most positive ways. I'd like to tell you how and I will next time. But for now, thank you so much. If you haven't already done a thumbs up in the actual comments under the video, please do. It, it is really helpful and it's a way that you can contribute. And um, Oh, Sergio says, I'd love the show today. Excellent. Thank you, Chris B, Eddie, Pip, Cheryl, Ed, uh, North Songs, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Holly K, Craig. Thank you also, Craig, for your generosity. Each week you've been here and I love it. Belinda, Shelly G, thank you for being the moderator. Cheryl, oh, look at you all. Prashant, make sure you come here next week. You are a welcome addition to our community. And Jim, always here. Thank you. Okay, time for me to go. And I hope that you have the most amazing day. And I hope that your faith helps you create heaven here on earth. And remember to love one another. So long and thanks for spending an hour with me today.